hip pain, it's a common complaint that can be caused by a wide variety of problems. Well, fortunately for us here in the Tampa Bay area, we have specialists like Dr. Steven Ratterman. He is one of the most experienced hip surgeons in the United States. In this edition of Health Matters, we're at the Florida Medical Clinic to find out more. Dr. Ratterman, what is hip pain? What are the typical complaints you see from your patients? Well, the typical patient is perhaps early 30s to late 80s and comes in com basically complaining of groin pain. Lots of times that pain will radiate down the leg into the inner part of the thigh, maybe even down to the knee. Um, some of the times it'll go into the buttock area uh, and other times still it might even go um, directly into the low back area. So people could confuse back pain for what is actually hip pain. It's a very sometimes difficult time to try and, and, and examine them and go through their complaints and just sort of see exactly which is the predominant source of the, of the pain. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things we can do that is fairly recent is we can do ultrasound guided injections into the hip joint. And by offering that kind of a service, we isolate just the hip and we can sort out whether the primary pain generator is coming from the hip or it's coming from the back. Mm -hmm. In addition, of course, we do a comprehensive history, physical exam, and, uh, and do uh, some x-rays typically to try and sort through all that. All right. So it, it seems to me that hip surgeries have evolved quite a bit over the last five, six years. Uh, what is the one that you're doing that you find m the best results from? Well, I think it's a spectrum of disease, and in years past, it was basically one treatment. You either did pain medicines until you couldn't stand the pain any longer, and then you had a hip replacement. The hip replacement hadn't involved very much. It, it was an operation that had started in the late 50s and hadn't changed and was associated with a lot of problems, such as dislocations, uh, early wear if you were young, uh, if you were active, it, the hip would pop out of the joint. Um, there was substantial limitations to your lifestyle. You, mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to cross your legs. You weren't supposed to exercise to any great extent. And so while the operation worked very well for pain relief, mm -hmm. everything beyond that, it wasn't particularly successful. So nowadays, we're trying to preserve the hip joint with resurfacing. Uh, we still do hip replacements. It works very, very well. But instead of doing them with a muscle cutting type approach, we're muscle sparing, and by that I mean we cut no muscles whatsoever. We literally separate the muscles out, roll the hip out, replace the hip, the muscles fall back in place. Wow. The advantages to that is that you get a much faster, earlier recovery. Um, for example, you might be walking the day of the operation. You might get off of a cane within a week or two. Uh, we don't really care how you sleep. You don't need pillows between your legs and um, you can start bending and crossing your legs immediately. So again, this early recovery that used to be a very tedious, onerous, not very fun recovery has gotten a lot better. A lot better. Now, is this the Birmingham technique? What is that? The Birmingham technique is a technique where instead of removing the ball, basically we're putting a cap on top of the femur that's already there and reshaping it to configure so that it lines up with a resurfaced socket such as that. Mm -hmm. And so it feels very natural and the ball of course is the same Sweet. size ball as what the good Lord gives you. Right. And so in that respect it's very large so it's very hard to dislocate. Oh. So a Birmingham is meant for younger active patients. It's mm -hmm. not really an all comers everybody gets one. You have to have very strong bone because in this particular location the cap loads the bone and if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia in any capacity Correct. the bone here is weak and so it'll break after the surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's not meant for everybody but again if you're a younger more active person it's a very good choice. That's great. Um, is that a titanium? What is that made of? The metal? It's a chrome cobalt steel. Wow. So will it go off when you go through the metal detectors? They will know you're coming. <laughs> I bet they will. Excellent. So recovery time is better. Uh, you're seeing great results. What about the incision? Do you have a big incision from hip surgery? It's gotten smaller and yeah. smaller as we've gotten more muscle sparing. Mm -hmm. uh, a Birmingham basically has to be done through a more standard type approach and is a little more invasive. Um, a total hip replacement through an anterior approach is perhaps eight centimeters long in an average person, perhaps four to five inches depending upon size, for example. 
Um, but for example, we don't routinely require blood transfusions, so you don't need to donate your own blood anymore, things of that sort. Again, everything about that operation is just meant to preserve all of your natural anatomy so that we're only putting a new ball and a new socket in and allowing you to recover as fast as possible. And what does the recovery entail? I'm assuming physical therapy? Still uh, an, an integral part of the uh, healing process, but uh, expedited. So for example, um, as I mentioned before, when you have the day of the operation, we used to you know, maybe give you a, a little ice cream sandwich or something for dessert, and now we simply go right to the front. We get you walking immediately the day of the operation. Um, each day we expect you to walk more and more. Your hospital stay is down to about two days. So for example, a Monday hit would probably go home on Wednesday. Typically we get a home therapy and a home nurse to help you for a week or two. And then as soon as um, you can, we get you to some outpatient physical therapy if you need it. Being that you do some professor work at USF, you must be excited about the downtown possibility of a medical school coming. Uh, very excited. I, I uh, was part of the initial program that restarted teaching University of South Florida residents and I'm very proud to have that affiliation the entire time it's been and it's been a, a real helpful adjunct. It's very much a team affair. I think that for every bit of knowledge that I impart to these young men and women, I think I get back tenfold off what they teach me. So I really have enjoyed it and it's been a very uh, valuable adjunct. That's great. Well, Dr. Ratterman, thank you for your time. Thank you. For more information on Dr. Steve Ratterman, visit fmchipdoctor.com.